All right, so in today's video, we're gonna talk about everything you need to know to use the ambient occlusion function in SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so as most of you know, the ambient occlusion feature was added in SketchUp 2024. So obviously, if you try to use this in an older version, it's not going to show up. But what ambient occlusion does is it basically adds additional shadow and detail to your images wherever there's a recess or wherever faces come together. So. Um, let's say that we were to draw a rectangle like this one. You can jump into view, face style, ambient occlusion, and notice what happens is you get this kind of like shadow around the bottom of the box right here. And so what that does is that's giving you visual emphasis. Now, one thing you might be noticing is we're only getting that ambient occlusion look where these edges come together um, on an inward corner. So like in, and in, where on the outward corners, we're not seeing that. And so what we can do is we can use that in order to create additional detail inside of anything that has a recess. So if you look at this, so if I take this box right here and I push pull this in, notice how I'm getting shadows here, here, and here. And so you can control the ambient occlusion style by going into the styles section of your tray. So. If I go into styles, oh, I think I broke it out separately for a YouTube short, actually. Um, if we go into styles right here, um, notice how, first off, if you click on the drop down, there's a couple styles in here um, that are kind of pre-made with ambient occlusion. We'll take a look at those in a second. You can have ambient occlusion with any style. So let's say, for example, that I was to do the construction documentation style right here. Notice how that ambient occlusion went away. but if you go into the face settings, so if you go into edit face settings and scroll down, notice how this option for ambient occlusion shows up. And in addition to having the checkbox to toggle this on and off, you can also set the distance, which is gonna be how far that ambient occlusion goes from those recessed edges, as well as the intensity right here. Now, one thing I want you to notice is notice how this actually has um, an additive effect in areas where multiple different recessed edges come together. So notice how in this corner, we've got multiple edges coming back in here and you're getting more ambient occlusion in the background or in the corner than you are everywhere else. And so this gives you a lot of control over the kind of ambient occlusion you can create. In this case, right, I might want a fairly strong amount of ambient occlusion, but I might only want a little bit of distance. But notice how if I was to offset this face in, do a push pull, so I'm gonna do a control T to deselect, but if I push pull, notice how I'm getting that ambient occlusion anywhere where this is a uh, push pulled in. And so notice that this will work on things like cylinders too. So if I have like a circular face and I push pull it up, and then let's say I offset this in, and push pull it up again, then I offset it out, like this and push pull it back up. Notice how I'm getting that ambient occlusion on the curved faces. And this is actually kind of interesting. Notice how you're also getting some ambient occlusion um, on the hidden edges right here. So these hidden edges are, if you turn on hidden geometry, this is the edges that have been softened or smoothed in order to create this curved face. But you are getting a little bit of um, ambient occlusion there as well. And notice how you get more of that. Notice how if I bump that up a little bit, then this almost becomes just more of like a shaded surface in here that you can still kind of see that hidden geometry. One cool thing about this is that ambient occlusion style is going to show up whether you have um, like black and white turned on with uh, no textures or if you have textured images as well. Like for example, and you can kind of see this if I toggle the ambient occlusion on and off, this does a really good job of adding that extra detailed emphasis wherever you've got recesses in here. It really kind of gives this some depth. And so one thing you're gonna to wanna to do is play around with the distance on this because sometimes if you do too much ambient occlusion or too much distance, notice how it just kind of like blows out the whole thing and you don't really get a very good result. So sometimes just a little bit will go a long way. But notice how, in my opinion, this looks significantly better than a model without the ambient occlusion. Now, you can also toggle into a mode like hidden line mode or shaded mode right here, but that's gonna give you more of a black and white view of your image 
right here. And probably if I jumped into a hidden line style right here, that's going to look a little bit better. So um, we can do that right here. We could also maybe toggle our profiles on, on our edges, just to get a little bit of detail. But this does look really great in black and white images. And so I've downloaded this family home Herlev Denmark from Von R into my model. But basically what I've done is I've taken a section cut across this. And practically speaking, one of the places where I really like this ambient occlusion is in things like this bed right here. So SketchUp has always been a, a sort of thing where if you take a cut across a building and then you toggle profiles on, sometimes you look at things and you can have trouble seeing what they are. But if you toggle ambient occlusion on in your floor plans like this, it does a really good job of giving your object some additional depth so you can kind of see where recesses are and other things like that. So to me, toggling on ambient occlusion in your floor plans um, definitely gives you a very unique result that I think looks really good. Now with this other model, this model, Circe A193 from SD, um, it, it, it looks a little bit different. So if I toggle ambient occlusion on here, notice how I'm not getting the same effect as I would if I tried to use shadows to generate depth, right? So this is basically a house with kind of an overhang right here. But if you go into an elevation view, you don't get the same effect with the ambient occlusion that you might with uh, using shadows. So if I toggle this like way up like this and toggle the distance up, notice what I am getting is I'm getting really good shadows um, around the edges where I have recesses or kind of dark areas inside of the model, but it's not necessarily giving me that, um, that contrast that I might get from the shadow system. So if I use the shadow system right here, notice what that does is that does a little bit better job of just kind of giving me um, shadows coming off of the roof like this. So one area that you might use this is you might use this kind of in, in conjunction with the shadows. Now, that being said, if I rotate out of this and I give this kind of a uh, kind of a view where I can see the underside of these rafters, this does a great job of giving me emphasis on where the rafters are and where they meet the roof. So there's still value there, but on the actual elevation view itself, um, a lot of the time I'm going to be coupling that with shadows to create depth. Now, that being said, if I do have an elevation like this one, um, it still can be very helpful. Um, note that this image is much more interesting to look at if you toggle that ambient occlusion on. So it's kind of one of those things that I would say maybe like toggle it on and off and uh, see, see how you like what it's doing. Um, but another thing that you could do is you could also in your styles go to select ambient occlusion and there's some kind of pre-made styles in here and let's go pick something that doesn't have a section plane applied to it just because I don't really want to mess around with that right now. So let's go back to our masonry detail. Um, but if you look at this masonry detail right here, notice how you've got these kind of like pre-built ambient occlusion styles that are kind of coupling different styles together in order to generate a new look. So you can play around with those pre-built ambient occlusion styles, but realistically, all of these styles that you have in here. So like, uh, let's say we were to pick the scribble on masonite style like this. If I go in here and I toggle that ambient occlusion on, notice how it's going to add that in the stylized view of the object as well. And so one area where this can get inter interesting and you can see this in this post in the SketchUp community um, on the forum, but one place where this can get interesting is you can also export the ambient occlusion pass um, as its own image and combine it with an image in Photoshop or any other photo editing software. And so the goal with that is basically what it does is it allows you to, um, it allows you to combine those and get a little bit of extra control over that look. So let's say for example, um, so what I've done is I've created three scenes in here. I've created one scene that has shadows turned off and ambient occlusion turned off that's just my line work. I've created another scene that basically has just shadows and I went in and I toggled all of the edges and profiles off so that this is literally just showing the shadows from the scene. And then I created a third that's basically the ambient occlusion effect from this model. So I've got these three scenes and what I did is I did a file export 2D graphic and I exported these to PNG files with a transparent background. So um, there's no background on them. You could do it with a background, um, but I did it with no transparent background. Well, now if I hop over into Photoshop, what I've done 
is I've imported all three of those. And for each one of the layers, I've set them to multiply. So that what they're doing is they're kind of adding on top of each other. And you can see when I toggle these on and off that uh, you can see what this would look like with or without the shadows, um, but they're adding on top of each other. Now, if I was to set this to a normal blend mode like this, notice how it just blocks out under, um, everything under it. So we wanna set that to multiply. But one thing that you can do is you can add a brightness and contrast layer. And then I'm just going to click on this, tap the Alt key, and then just mouse over the little line between this layer and this one right here so that it's controlling just that layer. And I'm gonna do the same thing with a layer for my ambient occlusion pass. So just hold Alt, click on this line right here. But notice what you can do is you can, you can adjust this effect on that layer. So I can adjust the contrast up, I can adjust the brightness up or down, and I can do that individually with each layer. So you can take these and um, basically bring them in and do additional post-processing in Photoshop as well, which I think is an interesting application for ambient occlusion. All right, so that should give you a pretty good idea of how to use ambient occlusion in SketchUp. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you like this, how you've been using it. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Video. Thanks, guys.